Thank you, Fre Frederick. It's really going to be very, very short. I mean, I, I brought some papers, but I'm not going to read them all. Uh, I read these papers on the 22nd of November 2015, when we had um, operational inauguration of the I3S, 22nd of November 2015. So we had moved into this building only a couple of months before, and um, I think it's time um, to see whether we've been able to fulfill our promises. So in terms of um, scientific platforms, our promise was to make uh, them available to everybody, not just at I3S, but also at University of Porto under the same conditions that apply to our researchers. I mean, have we been able to fulfill this promise? I don't know, maybe it's time to analyze this. And also, uh, I think it's time to think ahead and think what is missing at I3S, not just in terms of equipment, and we have done a very extensive discussion here about the equipment that we need to buy in order to uh, fulfill our scientific promises. And I think this is a very critical issue because uh, in Portugal, as probably most of you know, um, the money for equipment is very scarce. We've been able to find money uh, here and there, but in, in fact, some of the equipment is extremely expensive. We don't want equipment to stay um, within the um, research group laboratories. We want equipment to stay uh, in our scientific platforms to be available to everybody. I know this is not very common in some research institutions, but it is a rule in our institute. So I think this issue is going to be um, a high priority in our agenda uh, in the discussions that we may have with regional authorities and also national authorities, because without an I3S which is uh, fully equipped with updated equipment, I don't think we'll be able to fulfill our promise. But one of the things that uh, our colleagues from scientific platforms have been able to do is to uh, talk, decide what is uh, required, make uh, our platforms more um, available and also more efficient. We don't have a lot of resources, as probably everybody knows, but the resources that we have are fully operational and at the disposal of everybody at I3S and, as I said, outside I3S as well. So I know that we have uh, people from outside I3S, and I think it's important also to know your opinion about how can we improve our services. So everything that you can help us in improving our, our services will be very much welcome. So I hope this is a, a very, will be a very successful meeting. It's a working meeting. It's a unique opportunity to meet our experts, visit our labs and discover the cutting edge technology available to you. Not just to discover, but to improve it as well if possible. So thank you very much for being here and have uh, a very fruitful day. Thank you. So the first session will have four presentations and at the end we will have a Q&A uh, session, okay? So they this will be really fast, like five to seven minutes and then at, at the end we will do all the questions together. So please keep note of the questions you want to make at the end, okay? Thank you. Manuela? Thank you very much, Marta. Good morning. So by an Biointerfaces and nanotechnology platforms provide services and technical training in, the, in advanced technical characterization to study 
uh, the interaction between surface and uh, uh, materials and molecules, tissues and, and cells at micrometric and nanometric level. So our uh, uh, equipment uh, are available and suitable to study molecules, cells, tissues, biomaterials, and other materials also. I will give you uh, very brief uh, examples uh, since the time is very short. So uh, starting by the atomic force microscope, which is coupled to, to this inverted fluorescence microscope, and basically this technique works li uh, like this. So we have a cantilever, and the, in the end we have a tip on this cantilever that is scanning the surface, and uh, the, this the, the cantilever uh, deflects, and this deflection voltage is transmitted to a photodetector through the, a laser which transforms the voltage deflection in uh, force uh, volumes. So we can do uh, several studies like uh, uh, topography, roughness, and also the uh, characterization of a cell, for example, and uh, determine uh, morphometric uh, parameters like you have here in this table. We also can perform uh, force spectroscopy and molecular recognition. That means that we have a tip functionalized with a molecule that we call a ligand, and we want to see if that ligand is specific of a receptor, for example, in the membrane of the cell. And with a force distance curve uh, uh, typical, we can see the force binding of uh, the complex, uh, the ligand and the receptor. We can also uh, determine uh, mechanical properties. Uh, in this case here, we have an aerobolostoma cell line. And we uh, can perform force distance uh, curves in each pixel, and we can obtain the results in a force map and we can obtain values of uh, appearance and model, stiffness, deformation, and other parameters. After we have a Fourier transform infrared spectrophotometer, which gives us information about molecular structure through the identification of functional groups and molecular chemical bounds. So basically, as you can see in this cartoon, the laser achieves the, the sample and uh, induces the vibration of the molecules of the sample in different ways. And these different uh, vibration ways will correspond to uh, different chemical bonds and to different uh, functional groups. Uh, and we have here a spectrum, a typical spectrum, with the, the wave number to which that vibration uh, corresponds. So there are other applications, such as the analys analysis of thin films, the identification of contaminants. We can apply this technique in food industry. We can also use it in forensic science and in pharmaceutical field. Uh, after we have a zeta sizer, which give us uh, the opportunity to uh, of, uh, of study uh, nanoparticles, and we can obtain the values of zeta potential at different pH. We can also calculate the isoelectric point, the particle size uh, of the of the samples and the red, relative molecular weight and the protein melting point. So uh, this is a typical graph where you can see, for example, the variation of zeta potential uh, with the variation of uh, pH, and this is a bacteria. And we can apply this technique for study nanoparticles, uh, formulation for health therapies, protein conformation data, environmental strategies to address pollution, formulation stability, proteins and polymer, and quantum dots analysis. Uh, we have also a electrokinetic analyzer uh, that uh, allowed us to quantify the zeta potential at different pH also, but just apply to solids and uh, big samples when compared to the technique before, like powders, membranes, granules, and, and others. So here, in this graphic, the same that was before, but in this uh, red line, you can see the variation of the zeta potential with the variation of pH, uh, but for chitosan thin uh, films. We, chitosan is a natural polymer. So uh, we have also an imaging ellipsometer, which uh, basically works uh, with a laser that achieved the sample and it will measure the optical properties of the sample or what is uh, absorbed in that sample. So with this uh, equipment, we can determine the thickness 
of the layer that is absorbed on the sample in a range of six nanometers until one micron. There is a prerequisite to do this assay, is, is that the samples must be reflected. So here we have an example. For example, this uh, chitosan that is our control when modified with several different components, we can see the variation of the thickness of the chitosan with the, 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 the modifications. So, um, more than the applications in the health science field, we can also uh, apply this technique uh, in the semiconductor research, in flat panel display industry, in optical coating, in lenses for glasses or for microscopes, and photovoltaics thin films. So the last equipment is the optical contact angle analyzer with which we can determine the angle, contact angle between a liquid and the surface, as the sample surface tension and also liquid surface tension. So basically we put a drop on the surface and if this angle here is uh, high, uh, it means that we'll have a very spherical drop on the surface, and it means that the surface has a lot of affinity, or sorry, it, it, it has a, a, a lower affinity to the, the liquid. If this angle here is uh, small, it means that uh, the sample has a lot of affinity to the liquid. So, uh, for example, in this case, you see here the, the drop is very, very spheric. It means, in case of water, the surface is hydrophobic. So other application surface characterization according to the chemical groups existing in the surface, agrochemical industry, when they try to develop some, uh, uh, some uh, products to spray, for example, some plants, and shoe industry to study the wettability of leather surface. So in terms of training, we provide continuous training of, of our users. We call qualified users. We participate in several programs, uh, international ones and courses and doc in the uh, doctorate, doctorate programs uh, with practical sessions. We participate also in the European cost actions. And I uh, take this chance to uh, disclose this course that will be uh, held here in, at the ITBS in November during three days. For qualified years, uh, for qualified users, sorry, they have everything in the portal to use our uh, equipment. For non-qualified users and external clients, the says will be performed by uh, uh, expert technician. So this is our team. I am the team coordinator. Pedro Granja is the scientific coordinator and Ricardo Vidal is our uh, expertise technician. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay, so we'll, we'll move on to the next platform. Okay, I'm there. Um, so uh, I will try to showcase the work that has been done in the biochemical and biophysical technologies platform. Um, basically, our goal is to uh, uh, implement and develop methods in protein production, in the production, in the production of proteins for research and development, uh, proteins and protein complexes, and uh, to do the biochemical and biophysical characterization of all types of biomolecules. Okay, so I will focus the presentation in applications and not so much on how the uh, methods work. Uh, I welcome you and um, invite you to come meet with us in the coffee break or in the afternoon sessions or at a later occasion to uh, see the, these applications in more detail. So we have three major clusters of applications, protein production and purification for research and development. Uh, structural and functional analysis of biomolecules and their stability, 
and the characterization of molecular interaction. I will start with the protein production. In terms of protein production, uh, we have been doing protein production and purification since 2005. Um, we mainly do uh, pr uh, protein production for research in the biomedical sciences, but we also do for food sciences, material sciences, and we have most of our work is within the academy, but we also have industry partners. The protein production uh, is done in prokaryotic and eukaryotic systems. The most often used uh, are bacteria and insect cells. Um, we are able to do the expression of soluble and membrane proteins and the um, purification of these proteins. We can also do uh, produce protein complexes in co-expression within the uh, host cells. Uh, we have experience in refolding and we do affinity purified polygonal antibodies together with the animal house of the Institute. In terms of resources, uh, coupled to these protein um, production and purification, we have a lot of classical biochemistry resources. One of those, the one that is most often used is chromatography. Uh, within chromatography, we, we do extensive purification of proteins pe and peptides. We also do a bit of analysis of metabolites and other uh, biomolecules. Uh, we both do, we mainly do preparative uh, chromatography, but also analytical uh, chromatography. We have setups uh, uh, at room temperature and at four degrees for challenging uh, uh, targets in terms of stability. And we, all, we do all kinds, and we have done in the past all kinds of uh, chromatography from reverse phase to size exclusion, going through ion exchange and hydrophobic interaction. Um, the second cluster of applications is the structural and functional analysis of biomolecules and their stability. This is a shift, um, uh, or some of the applications are the, um, the probing of the secondary and tertiary structure of proteins by uh, circular dichroism. Uh, we do, do, do this in aqueous solution or in liquid um, uh, surroundings, this means membranes, vesicles, and in suspension. Um, we apply also this to determine the folding state of lack of function variants in several studies. Um, we do native size determination, uh, which is a determination which is independent of shape and it, it, it can be applied to purified and crude samples. Um, the stability is probed by uh, CD, circular dichroism, or differential scanning fluorimetry, okay? And this stability uh, assessment can be used to improve the buffers or the, the formula where we have our proteins or our other biomolecules to have them more stable to study them, okay? So I won't go into this, but we, all, we, we use the signature in circular dichroism to assess the structure and the stability. Um, and also we do a thermal denaturation of proteins with uh, a fluorescent probe that can give us a, a high throughput um, approach to the stability of uh, our targets, okay? Uh, last but not least, uh, we have a, th uh, a third cluster of applications, which is the characterization of molecular interaction. Uh, the, we are able to, to do this characterization both at the kinetics and thermodynamic level. Uh, this means that we can determine how fast and how slow the, bin, the binding and unbinding uh, 
of partners are of two biological uh, molecules. We can determine the energetic subbinding. Uh, and uh, uh, as an example, the energetic subbinding can uh, help us determine uh, if some interaction is specific or not specific and uh, thus uh, Dirk uh, started to work. Okay? We also assess the stoichiometry of the, of the, um, of the assemblies through essentially ITC. Okay? So the, in terms of resources, uh, the, two, the two main resources to assess and characterize molecular interactions is isothermal titration colorimetry and surface plasma resonance. Although we also use other approaches uh, besides this, okay? In terms of training, uh, our uh, flagship uh, action in terms of training is the um, one week practical course that we uh, organize every other year. Um, it focus on biomolecular interactions. The concept is to, to, to do a crosstalk between in vitro biophysical approaches to molecular interactions <coughs> and in vivo microscopy approaches, okay? This runs, as I said, every other year. Uh, we did uh, uh, the last one last year. We hope to do the, 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 the next one in 2018, okay? Uh, finally, the team, uh, myself, Sandra, which is the scientific coordinator, Fatima Fonseca and Julia Stefani, which are the, the, the rest of the team. Okay. Thank you. I'll give the floor to Hugo. Thank you all for being here today. So I will now present the proteomics uh, scientific platform. What we do is the proteome analysis by mass spectrometry, including protein identification, quantitation, and characterization of protein post-translational modifications. I will start by providing you a very quick uh, uh, summary of the proteomics uh, workflow. We start by a protein sample that can be from a fluid, a cell, a tissue, or an or organism. We get a protein extract and then we can follow two major approaches. One can be gel-based and the other one uh, can be gel-free. Starting by the gel-based approach, we uh, first step is to separate the proteins by their molecular weight in the case of, for example, 1D SDS page gel or by two dimensions. See the first dimension is isoelectric focusing of proteins and second dimension is uh, uh, molecular weight. Then we select the protein bands or spots that we want mm -hmm. to study and the next step after reduction and alkylation of the samples we add uh, an enzyme, usually is uh, trypsin, and uh, the resulting peptides are analyzed by mass spectrometry and will provide the identification of the proteins. The gel-free uh, uh, approach is being, uh, its popularity has been increased a lot in the last years, so it's more simple because we start by adding, as after reduction and alkylation of the proteins, we add directly the enzyme, and the resulting peptides are separated by liquid chromatography and um, ionized directly to the uh, mass spectrometer. And the results that you, we have are the identification and the, the quantitation of proteins. Uh, our major uh, applications that we develop are the molecular mass uh, determination that can be of protein, peptides, metabolites, polymers, among other molecules. Protein identification, the classic peptide mass fingerprint approach and uh, MSMS, well, a gel-based approach, the one the SDS page or two-dimensional uh, gel electrophoresis, and uh, LCMS for gel-free, uh, since we can uh, perform a direct analysis of protein extracts. 
protein quantitation. It can be <coughs> performed uh, by a gel-based uh, approach or an MS-based approach using label, for example, iTrack or TMT, or uh, uh, label-free approaches. And finally, we also perform characterization of protein uh, post-translational modifications, including just to give you uh, some examples, uh, phosphorylation, acetylation, glycosylation, among uh, many others. About uh, uh, our resources and equipment, we have an electrospray ionization LC MSMS equipment that comprehends two major parts. One of them is a, a, a nano uh, HPLC to separate the typically the peptides, and uh, the other one is a, a mass spectrometer that is a, a, an orbitrap mass spectrometer with a nano electrospray ionization uh, source. We use this equipment for high throughput proteome analysis. This equipment <coughs> provides high resolution accurate mass MS and MSMS spectra. The limit of detection for protein identification is uh, 10 nanograms of protein per LC ejection, and the peptide detection limit is about 10 atomos. Just to give you uh, a mass spectra example, we can get uh, typically for the peptide uh, molecular uh, uh, weight range around 50,000 uh, resolution, and uh, a mass accuracy is typically below 2 ppm, 2 parts per, per million. We also have a multi-tot of mass spectrometer that we use uh, mostly uh, from uh, SIEX, that we use mostly for the peptide mass fingerprint analysis and MSMS, and for molecular mass uh, determination. The software, uh, we have the commercial licenses of the Proteome Discoverer from Thermo and the, the mascot server from um, Matrix Science, and we use also freeware uh, open access uh, proteomics tools. Uh, training, we uh, provide uh, proteomics courses with already five uh, editions. We participate in pre- and post-graduation courses, including master and PhD <coughs> programs. Uh, we are um, uh, a member, uh, a node of the Portuguese Mass Spectrometry Network that is integrated in national roadmap of research infrastructures of strategic uh, relevance. Courses will start uh, uh, in the next year. Uh, about the access modes, we are uh, available for project development, development that includes planning and execution of proteomic tasks for prote projects or grant proposals, data analysis, and of course we are open for scientific collaborations. We also provide proteomics analysis of samples, for example, from gel bands, spots, or protein extracts. Finally, the team is composed by myself as team coordinator and uh, Celso Reis is the scientific coordinator. Thank you. <laughs> now I give the word. So good morning, everyone. I'll present now briefly the X-ray crystallography platform. As you might have guessed by now for the name, it, this is uh, a platform conceived to allow the crystallization and the structural determination of small molecules and macromolecules using X-ray crystallography. And it allows, or it's conceived to perform a number of techniques uh, divided in two main areas, crystallization and structural determination. We have, uh, as we have recently installed a, a crystallization robot, which allows uh, to perform a very small uh, volume crystallization assays uh, down to 10, uh, 100 nanoliters. It also allows to set up lipid cubic phase experiments. And as we have two walking crystallization chambers, you can exploit temperature as a crystallization variable very easily in, with our setup. We have, of course, then also an X-ray diffractometer, which uh, allows to collect the diffraction data from single crystals. It uh, does a very neat trick, which is to adjust automatically the exposure if you uh, are ab above the dynamic range of your equipment and then to scale your data uh, iteratively. We have a cryostat that allows to collect uh, the, your data at different sample temperatures all the way to 100 Kelvin. And because we have two different sources, a molybdenum in the and a copper source, you can collect data from uh, two different wavelengths even from the same sample. The wavelength switch is very simple. It's a flick of a button, and within 10 to 15 minutes, you are ready to go with another wavelength. 
This, of course, allows you to collect several different sets in a single session, also because we have a very fast CCD detector that has a readout of a couple of seconds. Uh, the system is, is uh, uh, assembled so that you have uh, uh, real-time data collection and evaluation. The, the software evaluates and processes your data as it is collected, so you have a, 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 a very accurate idea of the quality of your data before you finish your experiment. Uh, the equipment looks like this. We have then uh, this uh, sub-microliter crystallization robot from, uh, from uh, Norix. We have the large temperature control walk-in crystallization chambers at 20 degrees and at the 4 degrees centigrade, and our four-circle CCD equipped diffractometer with a cryostat that allows to do a number of experiments with a very high angular uh, resolution range uh, down to 0 0.4 angstrom for one of the wavelengths, and the, the online uh, software. So, the, we provide training on a per case basis, can be arranged on request, only uh, trained users are allowed to use the, the platform. And uh, we don't usually provide services, although this can be uh, evaluated on a per case basis. Depending on what your demand is, come and talk to us, anything essentially can be arranged. The team is just myself, the scientific coordinator. We don't have a TA associated with this uh, platform, and I think this is all I have to present to you. Thank you. I would invite my colleagues from the first session to go to the table so we can start the first discussion session. Questions? Comments? Chairs here, if you want to sit, feel free to come down. Is there any application, anything that you'd like to do or ask? I know you, you'll have the afternoon sessions that will be more informal and you'll have this opportunity to talk to them directly, but now it would be good to explore some broad things. Okay, good morning. So my question is to Manuela concerning the atomic force microscopy. So maybe as you know, we, have, we, we try to, to test for the forces between cells. And the equipment that you have is not, uh, uh, doesn't have the, the, the needs to do this type of uh, quantifications. So are you thinking in improving the the atomic force microscopy to in order to to have this this opportunity. Cells. So cells having a cell in a cantilever and, and cell in the, in the yeah. yeah. Isn't necessary to buy um, to, to buy a cell that you can do quantification and after you can mix them in a test tube or in the electronic way and you can try the other cell. Try the quantification of the cell to the cell that you can buy the next time. So the cell has the chemistry of quantification, even if A cell in the tip. Oh, sorry. Now you are listening to me. <laughs> Did you heard what I said before? Okay. Uh, and they just only work like that: the cell on the tip and the cell on the substrate. So we can do it. Uh, sometimes we need some more specific uh, tips that we can. We have to see if we have it or not. But it is possible. 
we, we have performed some experiments with NUNCENT that came to the course that you saw at the EMEM. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was necessary to have a specific or a more improved uh, microscope and it was necessary to buy uh, small equipment that I don't know exactly what it is in order to do that. That's why, so we, we, didn't, re we didn't do with your equipment because it was not possible at that time. So uh, that's why uh, I'm asking. Yeah, uh, okay. basically I don't know if you do it with a colloidal tip or with a, a pyramidal tip. If you do it with a colloidal tip, you can bind the colloidal tip, otherwise you, you have to have a, a, what we call a, a micro manipulator to do the tip. I don't know if it is the equipment that Nunusens has in, in EMEM. Here we do not have that man, macro, micro manipulator chip. We can buy the colloidal tips, but we do not have it that micro manipulator chip. Sorry, I'm not m listening. Okay, uh, the question is which kind of software do you use to analyze the bones? Uh, uh, we, we have two. Yes, uh, we have two uh, uh, major uh, softwares, the Proteom uh, Discoverer, that is uh, commercially available from Thermo. We have that um, software. And we have a uh, mascot from Matrix Science. We, these are the commercial softwares. Uh, then we have uh, also the freely available softwares, uh, Max Quant, that is um, focused for protein uh, quantitation. So if there isn't any further questions to this group of presentations, we will fall to the second session. Good morning everybody, welcome to R3S and to this session where we want to present you what we do in scientific platforms. And I'm going to present you some notes about the advanced light microscopy unit. Uh, we, uh, our maxim is to grant education and open uh, access to state-of-art light microscopy, uh, digital imaging technologies. Yes, we don't have this old microscopes, but this is inspiring. So the applications of that you can develop in the advanced light microscopy are basically and we uh, study the cellular systems in bioscience research areas, in all bioscience research areas that you can image in, cell biology, oncobiology, neurobiology, immunology, bioengineering, all that you can remember. And also other areas that for instance, even uh, alimentary industry or uh, chemical industry can deal with all that things. So the main applications are the characterizations of tissues and cell labels <laughs> for multiple cellular components and structures, three-dimensional study of uh, cellular environments, quantification of diff diffusion and transport of molecules in the cells, analysis of biomolecular interactions and activity of pr proteins, and uh, observation of cell interactions with biomaterials. And we are always open to develop new applications that could meet the needs of your projects. One strength of the facility, it's a real observation of the cellular events in 2D and 3D environments. So you could uh, observe the dynamic analysis of the cell behavior and including intracellular processes of subcellular structures you could follow the change in cell shape, motility, viability, proliferation. For instance, you can see here several examples. 
this is not working. <laughs> Always something doesn't work. Uh, also, analyze the protein dynamics and activity and interactions with other molecules through techniques of the, the, the known uh, techniques known as F techniques. Uh, you also can see the pattern of gen expression along the time and even measure ion concentrations and other uh, physiological conditions of the cells. So for as equipment, we have multiple equipments. Nowadays, I think we have 10 uh, different uh, microscopy systems. Here are only some examples. And the, trans the techniques, the light microscopy techniques that we make available to you are uh, mainly the light microscopy uh, contrast, optical contrast techniques, including bright field phase contrast, dif differential interference contrast. The, in the field of pollutions, we have the wild field pollutions microscopy where we could do multidimensional uh, imaging and also uh, resonance, pollution resonance energy transfer to analyze the interaction between um, proteins. And also we have a system with, where we can do uh, structured illumination for an easy optical sectioning. We also have two uh, point laser scanning of focal microscopes where we could do optical sectioning, multidimensional, also reflection microscopy that will allow you to trace the topology, for instance, of materials, and also do molecular uh, imaging with the, tech, the F techniques. Uh, for live cell imaging, we, we also have a spinning disc confocal microscope, which allows high speed imaging with confocal quality, and uh, we also have a in a total internal reflection microscope, which allows to do very thin optical slicing in the, the specimen surface region, for instance, to see uh, the cells attachments, but also uh, al to see, um, for instance, movement of molecules along motors or other kind of uh, that, uh, that uh, experiments. It allows single molecule imaging, and nowadays we are implementing super resolution by uh, single molecule localization and radial fluctuations. Uh, in terms of live cell imaging, all the inverted systems are prepared for live cell imaging, where we could do time lapse imaging, even in the, not even, <laughs> in transmission and pollution techniques, using transmission and pollution techniques, uh, and all I have uh, environmental control, temperature CO2, and we also have one where you could control O2. Uh, other point is that the microscopy doesn't stop when you acquire an image. Microscopy starts when you acquire an image, and you will have then to analyze those images. For that, we have a bench of high, high performance workstations that runs um, this software dedicated for image analysis, where you can do image analysis workflows, quantitative data extraction, image reconstruction by the convolution, 3D volume reconstruction, movie edition, etc. We are members of the uh, cost action new bias, which uh, is a, a cost action that uh, wants to implement and in the field the uh, role of the image bioimage analyzer. And very soon we hope to have also some bioimage analyzer in the facility to help you to and to analyze your images and to develop uh, in collaboration with the, 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 the groups, the different uh, developer, the develop workflows to analyze the images. The training, the training, so we give personalized training to the users use operate the equipment and to an, in the image analysis. Moreover, we also teach light microscopy in, mar in master and PhD degree courses in University of Porto. And we organize, since long time, open courses in microscopy and bioimage analysis, as uh, is the example, the optical microscopy imaging for biosciences, which next year will be the 10th edition. And in collaboration with uh, Federico, we organize also the EMBO course, which we hope that next year we could organize the third edition of the EMBO course in biomolecular interaction analysis. So the access, it's uh, very simple. So for the scientific ad academic community, 
the access it's paid free uh, on, on the basis of a, a fee charge per equipment per hour for the industry we also can do a project agreement and to access it we just need to, to send me an email then we discuss the project train the users the, the for the operated equipment and then you will have also support to, to evaluate what is being doing in the, the facility during the project and, and the, uh, you are free to use the systems. Uh, very soon, you, you, it will be also possible to access through an online portal, which is connected to the uh, PPBI, the Portuguese Platform of Bioimaging, which the, the ILM is member, and it's a national roadmap of research infrastructures of strategic relevance uh, infrastructure. And uh, so if we advise you that in the next month to visit to the site www.ppbpt. So the team, it's me and Claudia that helped to fund this uh, facility. And we have collaborations with uh, different uh, centers. So we have collaboration with the next tech the PPBI, who are also a member of the European Light Microscopy Initiative and the NeoBios, and we collaborate in, the, in establishing the Eurobioimaging project. And our financial support, it's um, dependent on North 2020, Portugal 2020, FCT, and, uh, and uh, the, the European Euro uh, Union at the end. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> Hello, good morning to you all. I'm Maria Lazzaro, and I will um, guide you through the Bioimaging Platform. So the Bioimaging Platform, our aim is to advance in the development, improvement, integration, and use of bioimaging solutions through re research, technology development, training, and education. Our applications, we try to uh, uh, extract information from molecules to animal, and I will guide you through the different equipment that we have to, to be able to do so. So we have different equipment. We can make two separate uh, bags for in vitro imaging and in vivo imaging. In the in vitro imaging, we have an imaging flow cytometer, atomic force microscope, confocal Raman microscope, laser scanning confocal microscope, and a critical point dryer that is used to preserve samples for SEM analysis. In the in vivo imaging, uh, we have a micro ultrasound that is located in the animal facility, and it will be available soon a micro CT. So I will guide you just through <coughs> some of the, the equipment because uh, we don't have so much time, so I will try to uh, talk about the equipment that it's more different or relevant. So we have an imaging flow cytometer for the ones that you don't know the, the technique. This is the only one that it's in the country still. So we hope there's more people buying them because it's a really nice equipment. So this equipment, it's a hybrid between a, a flow cytometer and a microscope. We only have, our configuration only have one laser, but still we can acquire six different images from every cell. Examples include um, internalization, for example, for people working with n nanoparticles, uh, spot count also with nanoparticles or organelles, colocalization, distribution, cell cycle, and mitosis. This is interesting because we are, let's say it's like a microscope, so, but it's also a flow cytometer, so we can acquire the same um, graphs as in a flow cytometer. So imagine that we are uh, studying uh, cell cycle and mitosis, but because we have the images, we can actually uh, quantify how many cells are metaphase, anaphase, telophase, or each of the uh, cell cycle uh, stages. So we also have a confocal Raman microscope. This, uh, this equipment uh, gives information about molecular vibration, so we can acquire, actually acquire the chemical fingerprint of a sample. And because we have um, coupled this uh, Raman spectrometer to a confocal microscope, we can actually uh, quantify the distribution of components uh, inside the samples, for example, in biomaterials on, uh, or biological samples. For the in vivo equipment, we also have uh, a micro ultrasound for small animals that we can acquire information not only anatomical, but also functional and physiological down to 30 micrometers. 
Examples of this uh, equipment, uh, it's cardiovascular phenotyping, image-guided cardiac injection, and uh, tumor volume quantification, amongst others. Uh, following the successful application of the PPVI that Paula was talking about, we will be acquiring very soon a micro CT. This uh, equipment also allows for true longitudinal studies for animal research, so meaning that we can reduce the amount of animals that we can use. This equipment is mostly known in the bone uh, research field, so we can acquire 3D images of the interior of the animal, and it's suitable for lung, bone, and fat tissue imaging. But with the use of contrast agents, we can expand the usage for sub-tissue and vasculature, so we can also uh, applications about heart imaging, oncology, and cardiovascular imaging. Because this equipment has a high uh, resolution, we can also use it for ex vivo experimentation for the characterization of biomaterials and, for example, also bone analysis. Interestingly, this equipment is able to co-register with other in vivo optical imaging so we can um, complement information from other machines. Uh, our platform uh, gives continuous training for the users and we also organize and participate in different courses um, based on a specific equipment utilization, also with focus on image analysis. I would like to highlight here that next year we are organizing together with Andre Maya from the BioScreen unit, a high throughput screen and image analysis for biosciences course that is also uh, credited with two ECTS credits. Uh, as all of the uh, platform here, our equipment is open to all the scientific community, but only authorized users are allowed to book and use the equipment independently. Um, all the users must undergo a training period and then they will be allowed to use the equipment. Because we operate on the basis of core projects and programs, we are also open for project collaborations. Our uh, team includes Ana Paula Pego, that is our scientific coordinator. I am the team coordinator and Dalila and Joanna are the members of the team. And Manela Bras is our expert on atomic force microscopy. You can, if you need, you can contact us at this email, and we are located in the room 004 S Street, and also the, the in vivo imaging is located in the animal facility. Thank you. Good morning. I'm going to present <coughs> histology in electron microscopy uh, at E3S, shortly HEMS, which began in 2003 with the uh, name ATAF, Advanced Tissue Analysis, until 2011. M is focused um, on um, optical and electron microscopy, uh, providing related uh, ancillary equipment. Since the transfer of the unit to I3S, uh, we are undergoing a restru restructuring level, both with the input of coordination scientific persons and also with the human resources from IPATIMUP since two, uh, 2011. Um, it's important to say that EMS is a, a node of PPBI, uh, Portuguese platform of uh, bioimaging. There are two ways um, of unit works. First one, you use the, the equipment directly by the previous uh, uh, training, a second as a specific mode request. Furthermore, LMs can help to, to design the experimental condition for the project scientific. Um, and uh, they, I show you uh, available histology equipment just like Like cryostat, the tissue shopper, tissue shopper, the modular embedding system, and also the paraffin embedding system. They are listed below also the histology application, such as grossing, the, um, the cryosectioning, and the immunohistochemistry, and on demand the other ones. An example of the application that you, you used on uh, our facility I show uh, two examples of, of H and D, uh, 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 sagittal cut of zebrafish 
and also as Freud, three examples of histochemistry when the stain combined the, the labeling of myelin, the calcium inside the, um, the femur, and also amyloid fibrils, and three examples of different markers for immunohistochemistry for uh, human and mice uh, uh, samples and uh, with different uh, uh, markers. Regarding the electron microscopy, you have available this kind of equipments, an example, ultramicrotome, two uh, electronic microscopy transmission, one with 80 kVs, another one with 120 kVs coupled with the camera and uh, the detector to see um, uh, elements, use here software called EDS, uh, uh, energy dispersive X-ray spectrometry, and where, it, where it's possible to see the elements uh, in the table, periodic table uh, between number four, beryllium, until number 194, plutonium. And also uh, the immunohistochemistry and conventional ulcer, ulcer structure in the uh, uh, electron microscopy applications. I show you some examples of the application wh where you do it in our unit, our platform. Three examples, the ultrastructure, of course all of them are ultrastructure, but I, I talk with conventional ultrastructure, an example of the uh, synapses in brain mice, the other one, uh, apoptosis in the, in the fish cells, and that combines biomolecules inside uh, using hydrogel uh, with a phage. Another example of our application is uh, use the immuno uh, gold uh, histochemistry using uh, detectors. I use gold to have uh, an example of human detection of the perisplasmic located in the, in the pathogenic bacteria. Also use techniques very easily and use-friendly use and rapid such a negative staining when you can see the organelles like exosomes and the fibrils, also the biomolecules such um, um, a surface marker with the antibody, antibody and also a cytochemistry when you would see a marker or enzyme inside vacuoles. And the last one, you use the, the, the techniques of X-ray detection, the EDS, where it's possible to see the elements. In this, in this example, you see titanium inside these cells with a peak of the, these elements. I'm sure beside the research activity with the course and the training in the uh, old time with ATAF and also with, uh, with the HAMS, the internships, the progress graduation, scientific training, and also the participation with the community during all the year in the I3S, um, since 2060, 77% of uh, all the groups are works with, uh, with us since 2060. And also you have some uh, collaboration with external uh, uh, groups and units and universities and companies and the national international research centers also with some uh, hospital units. I finish, we finish our presentation. Uh, with uh, presenting the, the, the team, Joan Hell was a scientific coordination, uh, Paulo Soares important, uh, and also scientific uh, coordination in the histopathology area. Briefly, Pedro Bridge, uh, with, uh, with our, uh, in our team, we focus in electron microscopy, and uh, the team members, with Basana, the supervising histopathology member, Nuno Mendes skillet in immunohistochemistry, Francisco Figueiredo skillet in uh, transmission electron microscopy, and uh, the consultant, such Fatima Gartner and Roberto Salema. Thank you all. So we will now move to the second discussion. Question? <coughs> okay, we have more questions now. Coffee break is not ready yet, so you really have to make questions. <laughs> Hello. Uh, this is not working. Is it? Yeah, okay. So uh, there are two equipments I really miss a lot from my work. 
Um, I think that one of them is scanning lighter microscope. Uh, I think that both for Rui or for Maria, I think it could fit your units easily. To have one, a small one, bench one, or a big one, or whatever, because now it's difficult to go to Samup to do something. This question is very complicated to, to answer because we need funding for, for that. We, are, we need the whole institute to have the, this, this, um, this kind of uh, feeling to, to have a scanning, for example, is very important to, to do it. I can answer your questions. Can add something uh, because uh, we have a list of equipment that it's uh, more urgently needed. So I think the the ones that want something to be bought, they have to express their interest. So in the institute, we can already know what is uh, more priority or. or like mm -hmm. do, do you know I if there's a, a bench Sam? Well, I don't remember by heart, but. Okay. Another one, maybe for so another thing that I really use a lot for my samples is um, like a hyperfoot confocal system. Uh, is there any equipment that you would recommend me, or that eventually is envisaged, envisaged to be bought? Or uh, I think for the hyperfoot, the biosciences uh, screen unit, it's uh, it's in charge of. of for that. Okay. Even if it's like yeah. a confocal, even though, confocal even though, system? Even though with current uh, confocals, you can do high throughput also. You can, because it has a motorized stage, you can program it to acquire in multiple positions. You can left it overnight to acquiring the images. Okay. okay. So, and then it's to treat the images. <laughs> so you can do it already with the actual system. Oh, hi. Uh, just a quick question regarding um, designing macros for I image analysis using MATLAB, for instance. Would you be able to help the teams with that? Uh, currently, I have some limitations to, to help, not only technical, but also uh, of time. But uh, I hope very, very soon we will have someone that will be able to help you with that. We will collaborate with the, 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 in the projects to design the workflows, not only in MATLAB, but also in, a, in a ImageJ and, and other languages. It could be needed. So uh, nowadays I can, I can give some help, but not the full help that I would like to be able to provide. So that's why the bioanalyst will, will complement that area, an important area. Yeah, yeah, it's very frequently, frequently, mainly in the organelles such as exosomes. And we have training for the persons where are they are required to use in our facility. <coughs> Probably there are 75% uh, actually in the hams are negative staining. An increase of this kind of techniques. But that's why it's really important to have No, uh, both. Now is, is a qualitative method, but uh, for quantitative methods, you need the image data analysis. <clears throat> Frequently, is a qualitative method. Hi. <laughs> yeah. Rui, it's concerning the immunohistochemistry. So are you um, planning to optimize antibodies or or you, we have to optimize in our labs and then ask you to provide the service. Is there another question, such as the, the, the previous one, I mean, yes, we need uh, new equipments to do it in moon or detection. The, we, we do it, but uh, we need a very good uh, antibodies with a, 
with antigen retrievals to have a um, uh, perfect binding be because the, the perfect immunodetection in an electron microscopy, use them, you need to use the, um, the cryo. And we don't have here, okay? But we, we designed the experiment uh, and you have uh, uh, good results. Even use the, 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 the negative st the samples, uh, liquid samples in, into the grid. Not only with the ultrastructure, with, with the slices on the grid, it's possible to do both. On the back of your badges, you will have the slots of time and the platforms that you 